This episode of the Grand Rising Show was brought to you by A Toxinous Assembly, where the real work is done. A Toxinous Assembly is a gathering of the minds that do the work. Now, for many of our first time subscribers and first time visitors, you may be wondering who A Toxinous Assembly are. You can find this information about our mission statement and our core values on the website at attacknessassembly.com forward slash about. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising up indigenous American voices by using genealogy, also known as family history or your family tree, which is the study of families and the tracing of their lineages and history. Genealogists use oral interviews, historical records, genetic analysis, and other records to obtain information about a family and to demonstrate kinship and pedigrees of its members. Our core values are the foundation of our company, which is essential to our success and serve as a lens through which we evaluate every business decision. Those core values are, but are not limited to, integrity, which is knowing and doing what is right, respect, which is treating others the way you want to be treated, responsibility, which is embracing opportunities to contribute, and servant leadership, which is serving the common good. Now at Atoxinous Assembly, we have a couple of goals here. And our first goal and foremost of the reason why we do everything that we do is to ensure that we help you do your genealogy and connect back to your tribe and find out where you are from. Everything that we do from the standpoint of the Grand Rising Show and all the information that's posted on the website is dedicated to that one specific purpose, helping you find your genealogy, find your relatives, find your family so that you would know exactly who you are. And if you choose to, tie back into your tribe, whether that tribe is a Native American tribe, an American Indian tribe, whether it's allowing you to determine which house in Africa that you belong to, or what clan of Scandinavia or Europe or France that you belong to. Either way, our goal is to do just that, help you find out who you are so you know exactly where to start. We are not here to tell you who you are, and we're not here to tell you who you are not. We're just here to help you discover your, your beginnings. Another one of our missions is to help you become financially independent so that you can help your generations for the next seven generations and be able to put a stable foundation for you and your relatives. And if you should choose to use this information that we provide free of charge to help not only yourself, but your community and your tribe, then we will do everything in our power to make sure that gets done as well. And remember, our goal here is to make sure that we help you get exposed to this information to put you in the best situation possible. So now what I'm going to do now is return it back over to the panel and see if there was anything I missed. And I will go ahead and get set up so we can now get ready and get digging into this information. Panel, take it away. Warning, warning, warning. Hard hats, pickaxe, sh shovels, boots, required.
Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Hopefully everyone's doing well this uh, the Friday, uh, for Friday as I call it. Uh, what's going on, everybody? How's everyone doing this Rising? Not that much. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Grand Rising to all the relatives. Glad everyone caught that cap is rising. Exactly. We have some uh, some of the panel be joining us as they get a chance to. Hope everybody in the panel is doing well, and everybody on chat is doing well, and all of the what do you call it? The silent majority. Hope y'all are doing well. So bones, um, yeah, we might as well get down with the get down and, and talk about. What's 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 about what's about to happen with the um, with the YouTube? Because I don't know if the listeners, or if the people in the chat know what's going on. So, you want to talk about that right quick, bro? Yeah, I mean, basically, it's the reason why we've been saying since we came on the scene about having our own and developing our own. If you have a YouTube page or your YouTube content creator, you've probably been seeing the Copa information that's going around. This is a law that's passed that they're using so-called defending children as a means of removing your video and your channels. Basically saying they're doing it for the protection of children. So moving forward, if your video has sounds, colors, images, characters, information that anything that the FTC or YouTube can deem children content, your content and channel can be removed and you will face a $42,000 fine for every video that they say you're guilty of. The problem is there's no set system on how they dictate what the rule is. They're going to pick and choose. If you read their statements, it's sad that YouTube tell you at the end of it it's best for you to go get a lawyer. They're already letting you know January 1st, 2020, over a thousand, thousands of pages will be instantly shut down and removed. Again, that's why we made the move that we made to start getting away from other people's platforms where they dictate what can go on and what can't. As some of you will see, you will see that the California Consumer Protection Act by Google has been paid. Meaning moving forward, if you collect AdSense on your website or any one of your streams, you will be paying taxes to the state that you collected it from. It's getting bad, y'all. But like we said, the solution again, the solution is having your own platform to where YouTube can shut down right now. And we'll still be live doing what we're doing right now. And again, I will advise you if you have channels and you're putting videos up, take the time out to go through the COPA to protect yourself. It's already in motion. It's not a person that's doing it. They have an algorithm that's aggressively going through the videos. I mean, they're not playing. If they're telling you, YouTube is telling you in their own statements. Oh, you got a channel? You create content? Uh, yeah, you better get a lawyer. YouTube got sued $140 million from the FTC. They made a deal to come after the content creators. 
Oh, I did not give the relatives the very snaky part about this. It's also attached to the ads that's on your Google videos. So, you probably did a video. Nothing in that video has nothing to do with children, not talking about children, very helpful. But now they run an ad on your video that's selling the toy. That's a $42,000 fine you own. Even though Google is the one that ran and picked the ad that ran on your video. I mean, like they said, yeah. It's basically, everybody been seeing the ads and the push for YouTube television. YouTube can't make YouTube TV if you got content creators on there making free content. It's time for us. Basically, YouTube don't need you no more. They got their name. They got their money off of you. Now they're going to brush you to the side. No if and buts about it. Use the children to get it in. People thinking they protect the children without never reading the fine print. You read the fine print, it's coming after you. You was going to say something, TMH? January 1st, 2020. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's about right. Be Well, basically dealing with this new COPA Act, if you fall under any one of the categories that they can pick at any given time, they can permanently take your channel and fine you $42,000 for every video that they say you're guilty of. Man, you can have a song in the background of your video that's the number one child song, and now you're guilty. You better not have no characters that children can relate to. Oh, you talking too nice. You sound like that you pandering the children. Oh, I see how LJ like to talk on the show? Can't do that no more. Well, we can because we ain't on YouTube. But yeah, if you're on YouTube, can't do that no more. Oh, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> I've been talking to everybody in me. <laughs> Peace, y'all. <clears throat> I'm just basically asking Bones questions. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is um this is real critical. This is real serious because people that have been creating content, you're gonna wake up and your channel gonna be deleted or your account is gonna be deleted or your videos are gonna be removed and they're arbitrarily removing videos now. 
Yep. Some of the YouTube's top creators. I mean, you can just go on YouTube. YouTube's top creators over the last eight, nine, ten years. They're leaving. Mm hmm. That's because they got lawyers that read contracts <laughs> and tell them uh, you, you yeah. might want to start making the plans. Yeah. And, and like the lawyer uh, last night that spoke on it. Basically, you better set up your own. That, that That's the best thing going for you. Because how are you going to get mad when somebody else is dictating what you can do with their service that you're not paying for? That's right. Everything, everything that's free monetarily has a price and has a cost to it. And the question is, you got to look at what do you if you're not paying, if you're not paying financially, what are you paying in? You're paying in time, you're paying in attention. You're paying in content, you're paying in viewers, you're paying in likes, you're paying in relationships that are built. So you pay it. Just because you're not financially dishing out um, monies, you're paying somehow. Everybody that either creates content for YouTube or everybody that has watched YouTube was paying. Because time is something that you can't get back. So any time that was invested, any sweat equity that was invested, you can't get it back when it shut everything down. So, so the, hate to hate to be the the bearer of bad news, so to speak, or to sound like doom and gloom. But at the end of the day, we just gotta tell the truth. Put that information out there because this is real. It's nothing to play with. They are shutting YouTubers down, and it's not even directed at anybody based off of race. Or ethnic group. This is everybody. Am I right, yep. Miles? Yep. Like I said, some of the largest YouTube content creators ever on YouTube are already gone. Two of them lost information from their channels already. And it's it's just how it's set up. They no longer need the content creators or want them. Like we said before, y'all seen the ads for YouTube TV, the NBA, NFL on YouTube. How can they do that if you got people making content and uploading it for free? Nobody's going to pay for that service. So the only way, you have to strip it away. Exactly. And what's the best way to do it? Blame the government. If it wasn't for the government, we yeah, wouldn't be doing children. this. Yep. yep. And use use children. Do it under the face of children. And it's so easy, y'all. You can have a shirt. In your video, you wearing a shirt. And the character on the shirt is kid friendly. That just got you fined. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. But it's their legal right. It's their platform that you never paid and you click you click that you're okay with their policies and procedures. And because we don't read policies and procedures and we're so used to clicking OK. You ever notice <clears throat> when they first started doing it, the policy and procedures were not that long. Then every 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 time you click them, they get longer. And then there was a scroll bar and now the scroll bar has gotten so big to any influence. So you just click on it and you don't read it. Most people don't even know what they're signing or saying when they click OK. That is a digital signature yep. that binds you. Yep. And I don't think people understand that. And again, that's why we always been saying about having your own, moving to your own. It wasn't done to be a stunt. It was done because you can see what was coming. Exactly. I mean, I can't speak for no one else in my line of business outside of A2. I have to stay up on the YouTube policies and digital policies when it comes to entertainment and media. So, you know what I'm saying? We kind of had an idea it was coming. Matter of fact, how long have we been telling people it was coming? Listen, you need to start having your own and making adjustments so when they hit you, you'll be all right. Yeah. 
And then again, why wouldn't you want to work to build your own? And this is no knock for nobody that's doing it because you have to start someplace. But how can you be running around saying you're a proud Indian, proud for your people, proud of the things you build, and but you're dependent on somebody else's service? Exactly. I mean, right now, Byron Allen is fighting against the Supreme Court. And I, I still don't think a lot of people realize what that means. It means if they have a YouTube, we have the right to build our own version of YouTube. We do not have to be put... I don't know. Maybe something wrong with me. I don't know, TMH. Nah, it ain't you, bro. I promise you it ain't you. I promise you it is not you. But I'm like, hold on. These people don't like you as a whole. They don't like your kind around. Why are we knocking on the door? Why don't we just go over here, break ground and build our own and put our own doors up? Well, see, now you asking too many questions. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, no. All I can repeat is what my relatives in the islands told me. We not beg a friend. No. So, so for those of you who have um, YouTube providers, um, if you if you got if you got YouTube people, what's what's the best way? If you are subscribed to YouTube channels that you care about, I would encourage you. You know, I would encourage you to reach out to them and ask them do they know about what's coming up, and, and encourage them to back up their stuff. Because regardless of how I feel about, you know, people or certain viewpoints, everybody has a right to protect their intellectual property that they've worked hard for. So this ain't about, you know, celebrating uh, the, the tearing down of somebody's platform because that ain't cool because everybody's affected. We got to make sure everything that we have is backed up. That's time consuming. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. This, so if you got a, so if uh, you celestial, just, go ahead. A celestial love says she was boyfriend. You might have to change uh, the quality of the video that's coming in because that's, uh, we can tell you that's coming from the internet providers in, whoever your service provider. And hopefully moving forward, there's something that we can do about that as a community. Oh, Cliff is funny. She said, people eating chicken sandwiches and catching bird flu. They watching Keep and Power. <laughs> yeah, too busy being entertained. And entertaining your life away from you. Right in front of your eyes. Exactly. But, I mean... Again, I'm the type of person If you're telling me you don't like me You don't want me around There's nothing on God's green earth That you can cook That I would eat from you Same people will tell you about Clone chickens and all these chemicals But be the same ones that want to fight in the Popeye's line For some fake chicken Man, we need to stop Exactly. It done got so bad. It done got so bad that we don't fry chicken no more. We go to people that don't look like us, that don't like us to fry chicken. This ain't crazy. Very. Crazy, embarrassing, the whole nine. Yeah, if it's buffering. And then what's worse. Sorry, TMA. Now, so that tell people if it's buffering, you need to change the settings of your computer, and, I, and we know why it's buffering because because we, we weren't having problems. It's not, and it's definitely not on our end. Yeah, it's them internet providers throttling down people's speeds at particular times when you're doing particular things or watching particular channels. Trust me, it's happening. 
Just do yourself a basic speed test. Trust me, it's happening. Mm -hmm. You sound like an agent. Oh, but, don't do but that. Over here, but over here, they don't realize <laughs> when stuff like that happens, we don't cry about it. We don't whine about it. Matter of fact, to be honest, relatives, I love it because it pushes us to keep building our own. So keep it up. Before you know it, <laughs> we try to have our own internet company. Keep pushing. Basically. You want to throttle the relative speed? Okay, don't worry. Put us Now we're going to put ourselves in position. Won't be no more throttling. We're probably up, not down. Exactly. When we know for a fact there's no such thing as slow internet. When we know for a fact high speed internet is free and it's always around you. You pay for them to slow down your signal. Ain't that yeah. crazy? Yep. This is exactly what we're doing. Paying to get slow and subpar service. Ever since we went digital, that's been that's always been an issue. Remember the days of the analog phone where you never dropped a signal? You never, I never dropped a call when I had an analog phone. Never. Now, how is it when I'm digital? I'm always dropping phone. I'm always dropping calls. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. How is that possible? Can somebody By design. See? Exactly. The more technologically sla slabby, savvy we get, the slower the slower our access gets. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Digital gives the companies way too much control. They can shut you off with a flick of a switch. Yep. With the push of a button. I mean, to give your uh, relatives a little idea on how the thought planning went, that's why we went for the towers first. Once we get the towers, we're not begging nobody to use their towers for us to start our own internet, to have our own phone. We don't have to go through all that because we have the towers to bounce our own communications first. Exactly. I don't think people understand what that means or the significance of that. And it's nothing that we invented. It's just something that we use that works. That's the difference. If you're using something that works, or if you see something that works and you have the ability to duplicate it, why not use it? That's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm slow. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. When everybody else does it, but you have your own telling you that you're an agent or you're this or you're that because you're trying to pursue self-sufficiency. What's that movie um, that Master P had out when they were um, they were showing everybody how they were getting the um, cell phones and the um, controlling the, the um? I got the hookup. Oh, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. 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 That's that's what and that's that. literally what's going. Yeah. <laughs> He turned a he turned a he turned a uh, a stomach ache <clears throat> he turned a stomach ache moan into a multi million dollar industry. Uh. Oh, everybody know that. <laughs> Him and Biggie. Oh. oh. Then, then you got to then you got to uh and then Rick Ross told him made it a gorilla grunt. Oh. Made the gorilla grunt. You know, that's that feel time you made it in from doing something you sat down and you know you get the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you got children around, once all the children leave and it's peace and quiet and you can think. Oh, so that's the sound of relief. That's the sound yeah, of relief. Oh. Plot, plot, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Okay. 
Just checking. I'm just saying, so it's a relative side, you know. Forgive us for bombarding you with disinformation or must make it sound like it's doom and gloom, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to inform you, keep you informed of what's aware and what's going on. So you will not only be able to make a change and make adjustments, but you'll be able to warn other people so they can make changes and they can make judges because adjustments because there are people that you can reach that we can't, that you will reach that we won't. Because again, this is not just about, you know, saving us or making sure we're good. This is about making sure everybody's good. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to agree with your content to know that you still need to be, I don't know, what's the best way to put it? I don't have to agree with your content in order for you, for your content to be protected. I guess that's the best way to do it. Facts. Yeah, facts. So. So that that's my, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, and personally, don't have to like you or anything. Not when it comes down to this fight here. Because if they can do it to one, they can do it to all. And yes, there is sometimes in life during these fights that you team up with people. Depending on what you have state. And these are one of the ones where you would join with different people in groups that were like-minded because what's at stake? Your personal freedoms are at stake here. This is not the time to be individualist and isolated. Mm -mm, not even. That's what we're saying. If, you, if there are YouTube platforms that you care about, and if you, if you don't care about them, you have access to those individuals. They sh they still should have a right to protect their content. If that makes sense, because it's not. It shouldn't be up to, I guess, for lack of a better term, the federal government to decide what should be done with their content. And they should just it should just should be um, eradicated or removed because somebody doesn't decide to read or somebody doesn't decide to, you know, or because they don't have access. One thing we learned is that some people have access to stuff that a lot of people don't, or some people have access to stuff that they're not even aware that they have access to. But once they're made aware, then they can do something about it. So it no, ended. you can have a VPN, you can pay for a VPN and all that information. When it comes down to the people that's responsible and the entities responsible for this, it doesn't matter. A VPN is just going to work against everyday people. It's not going to keep you private or keep your signal safe from them. The best thing to do is what we're doing. Well, in my eyes, is what we're doing, is what Byron Allen is doing, is what many others are doing. We have the right to build our own. We're not saying that we're outside of the law or above the law, but the only way to guarantee that you can speak to your people your truth and don't nobody get in the way of it is to have your own like we was talking before it went on do the relatives realize the 1866 act mean if they set up an nfl we have the right to set up our own infrastructure like the nfl if they had an nba you have the legal right to set up one if they got cable companies, you have the right to do it. Mm -hmm. The only reason we are in these situations as a people is because of us. It's our failure to want to get up and create. It's our failure to let go of what's comfortable to us to go seek and search to have our own. Hey. The majority of the so-called African-American program that's bombarded to you on a daily basis wasn't even created by you. Then we was laughing about that last night. Kelsey Grandma created Girlfriends and everybody around here was acting like it's a good show. But it's made by a person that doesn't even live your life. Yeah, baby, I hear the brooms are calling, toss salads and scrambled eggs. Ew. James says, Doodle Vision says 78% of scammers will be eliminated on January 1st. 
Facts. Yep. That's the good thing about it. That these scammers have been holding on, that kept using the same tactics, taking money and finances from our people and not delivering what they're supposed to deliver. Oh, yeah, I don't feel bad for y'all. Bye-bye. Long time overdue. They get the, they get the boot on my bone. Whee! Mm-hmm. Get them, get them out of here. It's facts. Now here, now here's a here's a big thing. Being that they'll did now here's the funny thing. Being that video content has now been sent. Think about this. YouTube got fined, right? This is something what people pay attention to. YouTube got fined. They turned in all content, right? Of people who yep. were monetizing their channels. Now they pay attention. They turned in all content of monetized channels. I'm going to say it again. They turned in all content of monetized channels. Hey, you broad breast stroking. You said all, you meant some, right? No, Most all. Any, any, anybody on YouTube that has a monetized channel, they had to send it in to the government because it was being monetized and they wanted to make sure that it wasn't targeting children. So that means the U.S. government has now got every access to everybody's channel that's, that's monetized, and they've combed through it. So if your channel does not get deleted after this, and you know you on some bull, now we'll tell, now we'll find out who the agents are. And you know what's so funny? I remember having this con this conversation months ago, months and months and months ago. <laughs> So, you know, everybody that's been crying, agent, 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 you got sus suspicious content on your channel and they still allow you to be on, we know who the agent is. So, we'll see what happens, but it, it, it really don't matter. People been on people's websites while they were making drug deals and they still watch their shows, so it don't even matter. Yeah, but that's the problem. And I'm glad you mentioned that. That is the problem with our community. Is that, are we afraid to call out somebody that's wrong because they look like us? I mean, that's a problem. That people can do some of the most questionable things and people show up the next day and support it. So well, who's the real problem? Well, well, I mean, honestly, who's the real problem? Well, I mean, the audience, because they continue to support it. But the, but the thing that I find that was disheartening was they, they chalk it up as entertainment. That's not entertainment. Would you want your child watching something like that? Come on, son. Would you want your child participating in something like that? And then, and then the excuse is, well, it's entertaining. I'm just using it. I'm just using it to entertain myself. Okay, you're actually being you're actually being witness to illegal activity. But and what's worse, I usually see people that use that excuse, the entertainment excuse. Children be acting like their parents. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You know what's worse? These same activities, and I'm going to say it like this, these same activities that these people show and display is the reason why one of us will get shot down in the back. It's the reason why one of our children got to be safe on who they talk to and walk to. And we support it? That's disgusting. Do y'all realize it's outsiders who never live around us, who listen to this stuff, who see this stuff, and this is how they treat our children. And that's cowardly to sit there to keep supporting that. That makes you worse than the colonizer. Because you one of us, and, and you're the main, oh, oh, I'm just, I'm sorry, y'all. Stuff like that really do get up under my skin. It's like James said before, you live life and you happen to see life lost before your eyes. You happen to see some of the most horrible things that happen to our people. It changes you. And for people to think it's entertainment still, that's reckless. Was it entertainment to, to, to Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, was it entertainment then? No, it wasn't entertainment because it was done to us by someone that don't look like us. When it's done by us, to us, from somebody that looks like us, now that's entertainment. Sickening. Same people to be like the white man, the white man. I'll tell you to your face, ain't no white man ever never came to me personally in my life and did no harm to me. 
you are, brother, you a victim, all right? Only thing I'll be a victim of is not choosing to use the God-given choice I have to make life better for me, my family, and relatives. I, I do not subscribe to that baloney, and as a people, we must stop. Because if you tell yourself that subconsciously so long, you believe it. You gotta be that. So can I add something? Sure. Mm-hmm. So a while back, people kept saying, white man, white man, white man, white man, right? And I asked the question, I said, well, I'm confused. I said, because um, the white man that you're saying trying to get me got color to him. The system that y'all saying trying to get yeah, yeah, yeah. please please repeat that part. Please one more time. The white man that y'all saying trying to get me got color to him. Bingo. Mm -hmm. They look no, like the me. Part where you said, "Can I say something?" No, say, <laughs> no, say it again. No, say it again. No, stop it. No, for real. Like it was. This is the question that I posed. Yeah, more time, um, it was. It. Oh, so you just gone deal this, a white person this, white person this. Well, I'm confused because um, our, uh, uh, they don't look white to me. They look like me. Exactly. And we got to remember, white and black is not a color. It's a status. Come on, man. Yep, melanated that's... people have a white status coming. Melanated people from North Africa have a white status coming to this country. So what is it again? It's just a status. So yeah, you can be darker than me, but you white. It's that status, it's, it's that disease, it's that belief system that you accept, that you allow and that you perpetrate on others that look like you. I mean, look at Brian Allen. Perfect example. Not on the news. Ain't nobody talking about it. Ain't where all the celebrities, all your athletes and football players that people want to bow down at their feet and think they did something for you. But the most important case of our lifetime is going down. But people want to party. <laughs> And I remember talking to the mates about this, that this is where we as a people, we need to start getting together and removing some things. There should not be an NAACP. There should not be a CBC, a Congressional Black Caucus, if an individual melanated man has to take his own money to protect the civil rights bill. Why do we have these organizations again? They need to go. Well, because don't some of them, some of them sit on the board of Comcast? Mm. Yep. Oh yeah, these same uh, entities that's supposed to be protecting you have your best interests of you and your children are sitting on the Comcast board. So whose side are they choosing? Not yours. Say, say that part again, Bones, I don't think they heard you. A lot of these so-called black leaders are sitting on the board of Comcast, collect from Comcast. They not here to help you. They helping themselves. Matter of fact, where's Messy Jesse? Where's Al? You notice you don't hear nothing from neither one of these dudes. Not a peep. I ain't even hear two sticks rub together. So I got a question. Go ahead. You. So that episode from Boondocks where they were um, making fun of um the the executives and whatnot of BET. That mm -hmm. wasn't a joke, that was real. Yeah, it's real. Mm. Listen, BET is called Black Entertainment. Right? But BET is owned by Viacom, y'all. Viacom owns BET, VH1, and MTV. So how melanated is it? The moment Bob Johnson sold the channel, you didn't realize they got rid of Sheen Summit and every educational program they ever had and replaced it with what? College Hill. Gave you foolish reality TV shows, drama. 
programs to show you that, oh, if you got successful melanated women, they all got to be single and something wrong with them. And all melanated men act this way and that way. You got the show on the game somebody tried to get me to watch the other day. I almost flipped everything over. You trying to tell me in the NFL only the melanated players of women are out here running around acting foolish. But this is the stuff we support. All in the guise of this, entertainment. Yeah, and this is what Byron Allen is trying to wake us up to. To you, you treat it as entertainment. No, it's reprogramming your subconscious. Now imagine... These images, that's all your children see. That, that's what they're seeing. That's what they're hearing. So what do you think they emulate? It's a good question. Children don't do what you tell them. They do what you do. So what are you doing? Sam, what are you doing? What example are we are setting? You following your ancestors? Are you following your ancestors? Or are you following this indoctrinated program that a lot of us picked up? I'm keeping it 100. And all of us picked it up. So don't make no mistake about it. It's, it's in every last one of us. It's once you recognize it, what are you willing to do to change it? Exactly. Keep Talk to me about a Trump impeachment. I can care less about a Trump impeachment. I want to make sure 2020, they ain't walking around here talking about you melanated folks need to get on the phone. They got another thing coming. <laughs> Because people think I don't think I don't I don't think people understand impeachment does not mean jail time for Trump. That does not. You realize you cannot impeach a sitting president. He got to get out of office. <laughs> can't press as long as he in office. You can't press. Show me in history where a president was ever sitting and took on charges. No, he got to get out of office for you to charge him. And let's go happen the top of 2020 a war break out. I bet you that impeachment stuff go away. Y'all don't notice this impeachment hearing happen to come out at the same time again. The largest case of our lifetime is going on right now. And we get felonious Trump. Who is changing residences. Who's no longer living in New York, but he's living in Florida. Ain't nobody asking why. Oh, I know. Let me hush. I forgot. We still online. <laughs> Doodle Vision says Trump's got peaches. Yep. He got 99 problems and a peach ain't one. How about that? Correct. I mean, didn't they impeach Bill Clinton? What happened? Nothing. Nixon, I am not a crook. What happened? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no, when they, when they, when he went through an impeachment hearing and he stepped down. People think he got impeached, but he just, he stepped down. He didn't get. Yep. And the only reason Walked he stepped away. down, well, the only reason he stepped down was because of Watergate, not because of the impeachment hearing. Yep. But you know what? What do I know? And people keep hollering, oh, Trump getting impeached. So that means what? Vice President uh, Pence be the president? You think he's going to be better off? He's going to be worse. Y'all better check his, y'all better check his record on what he, what he vote for. When he was, a, when he was, um, <laughs> when he was a local politician. Mm-hmm. Sad thing about it is our people got more in common and a lot of people won't like this. Our people got more in common than Trump than anybody else that's in there. 
Let's keep it 100. In the 90s, the majority of us wanted to be like Trump. He was in all the hip hop videos. He, he was the thing that, man, let's stop playing. Shh. Stop it, Bones. Be nice, Bones. Get mad at Kanye, because Kanye go meet Trump and come out and tell you 400 years is a slavery, tell you the African American is the American Indian, and our and, and our people laugh at him and call him crazy. Yeah, man. That goes Last show. 30, man. It wasn't, trendy, it wasn't trendy enough, Bones. It wasn't trendy enough. And I guess, uh, didn't him and Kim go in there and get that person out? So obviously, don't you think some bit of information was passed off to him. Oh yeah, they, uh, people hating on that too. Don't worry. Ain't this the same Trump that you could have seen in the '90s in a puffy video with a shiny suit? I'm just saying though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Take that. Take Ooh, that. He was in a um, he was in a Jamie Foxx video too. Blame it on alcohol. He's all, listen, he was part of our culture in the '90s. That's what I mean. We got to stop catching short term amnesia. Hmm. I'm just saying we have to be careful because a lot of times these people that rise to power, we're mm-hmm. the ones that's putting them in place. Yep. We the one that put him in the videos. We the one that made him a household name. We the ones that made Trump a celebrity. We the Not ones just that. We, that. we the ones that when we go to get a hotel, go 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 to a hotel, we want to stay at the Trump Towers or Trump Plaza or something with Trump name in it. And then we put it all on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, but we forget about that. Never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. I digress. You know, that, okay, you bring up a very interesting point. You, TMH Bones, y'all bring up a very interesting point because when you really think about it, not only is it true that in the 90s, yeah, Trump was in videos, um, um, R&B, hip hop slash, you know, hip hop videos um, and reality show. If you really think about it, um, um, what is it, publicly, we've seen him go in different places, but it didn't become an issue until he became president. And we don't even pay, we didn't even pay attention to how he even got there. He got there because we helped him. Right. Listen, if right. you want to make something popular, <laughs> you know who to go to. You know a community to go to if you want it to be hot. If we say it's hot, everybody accept it. You gotta remember at this time when Trump was a part of our culture, the funny part is they didn't even want Trump. Nope. We gave Trump street cred. Let's keep it 100. Stop yep. playing. Yep, we gave him his street cred, like it or not. We gave it to Clinton. We gave it to Obama. We give it to all the politicians. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's really it's time interesting for us to, to start hear. making better choices as we move forward. What'd you say, Gabrielle? No, I was just, I mean, just now, I mean, listen, it was real interesting to hear Bone say that and then really you know, take a reflection on, we give that recognition, we give that um, that okay, the thumbs up. And we don't pay attention, what if we did that with each other? What if we did that with ourselves? Bingo. Where would that take us? Um, where would we Where would we go together? Where, where would we be? Um, where would we actually be if we applied that to ourselves and each other? That same energy, that same thought, that same recognition, that same thumbs up of approval. Um, where would we actually be if we channeled it differently for the betterment of us as a people? Sky's that was limit. Just my thoughts. I mean, sky's the limit. I mean, what you're saying is absolutely right. Challenges we are too busy 
chair people down that are trying to do something and the ones that ain't doing nothing, we, we're lifting them up. And what I mean by that is you got the scammers and the crooks and the criminals because we scared of them, because they're not harming us. When they don't harm anybody that we know, we just gonna leave them alone and let them do what they do because they look like us. So. I mean, you know, you know me, I'm a talent. Because I ain't scared of nobody. YouTube got the way it was because people were scared and they wanted to have their likes and they wanted to have their views. So let me ask y'all a question. Now that the likes and the views and content is about to be taken down, now what? People are about to lose their whole channels. 10, 15 years of work about to be gone out the window. So what was all that Placating to scam us about. What did it get you? Got your channel taken down. Got your content snatched. So now you moving backwards. You got to start over. Hope it was worth it. I really do. So. So for those of you who are just coming in, um, Bones is breaking down the co the Copa. Was it the Copa the Copa Act, Bones? Yeah, the Copa and the uh, California Consumer Protection Act. They go hand in hand. People talk um, about the. Go ahead, Gary. No, 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 no. Um, I was just seeing um, seeing James's um. Um, message and I was about to ask is he talking about a non-disclosure agreement? Mm-hmm. Okay. He's saying ask scammers so they know what the NDA is. A non-disclosure agreement. And what if kind they of forgot, they'll be reminded. If they forgot, they will be reminded pretty soon. I don't understand what that means. So when you sign a non-disclosure act, the purpose of a non-disclosure act is it's written in the non-disclosure as an act is any of the information that was shared is not to be disclosed by anybody that did not sign that that act. So for instance, so Gavin, let's just say me, you, Bones, no sellout, and Copper are viewing some content that you have put together that you're trying to you know get a activated in Jacksonville, North Carolina, some sensitive information, uh -huh. and then I decide because I get kicked out because I can't prove who I am and I don't have no identity I go out and leave but I still got the information right but I signed the NDA so then I go put that information that I was not supposed to share with anybody else and I share with other people and then I put it on YouTube I'm in violation of the NDA oh mm, okay you, uh, there was a portion you lost me at what um you said okay you said if we all sign a non-disclosure agreement and right. I get kicked out of no, 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 no. You share information about what you're trying to do for your community. Uh -huh. And then because I violate an agreement that we had with a nonprofit, I leave, right? Well, I'm not supposed to take anything with me that was part of the organization. Meaning any content that was signed that was part of that non-disclosure agreement. So if I take that information, remember, I'm no longer part of, let's say I'm no longer part of Atasha's Assembly, and mm -hmm. I go out and I create my own YouTube channel, and then the information that you were shared that I had a non-disclosure agreement with you about, I then take that same content and I share it with not only the people that I have a new agreement with, but I share it with YouTube, I'm in violation of the non non NDA agreement, the non-disclosure, because I've on my signature, I pledge not to share that information. I mean, I get that. Okay, that makes sense. But what's the example? Okay, I, I I think I missed something. I apologize. No, an example. All right, let's say if A2 has a project going on with you, Gabby, in your mm -hmm. community, right? Uh -huh. So we'll do an NDA so the information of your community don't get used and nobody else can't take it and use it without your permission. But now mm -hmm. somebody leaves outside of A2 and take that information and repackage it up. 
Okay, you're sp okay. Are you sp okay? Um, you mean like ideas and stuff like that? Yeah, ideas and, and they, they reuse it as it's theirs. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh, they sell subscriptions to get access to it. They sell subscriptions to get to get access, access to it on YouTube. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not even being funny. I don't uh, all it is, 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 is information free as long as you pay for a subscription. <laughs> oh, the information is free as long as you pay for it. Okay, so yeah. it's not free. No, it's not. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What does that have to do with the in, 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 in NDA? The NDA was signed for them not to disclose that information. But then not only are they disclosing the information, but they're, just, they're making people pay for the information that was disclosed. Oh, you're talking about YouTube. Yeah, not necessarily oh, YouTube, yeah. but a person with a YouTube platform or a YouTube channel. People people do it all the time and they get sued. But see, here's the thing people got to realize. It's one thing to do it against a person. It's another thing to do it against a nonprofit. Because now you're federal, now you're, now you're violating federal law. Yep. So people are signing NDAs with YouTube? No, people are signing NDAs no. with each other. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's all right. Gabby, look at it like this. Well, your our right, H2 is helping you build a project in your community, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. We get you in contact with funds. You probably bring financial information, put it on the table, so we have a working deal. Now, an okay. NDA stops anybody from taking that information and using it towards somebody else, because that's your creative content, that's your property, that's your project. So us as a group, as us as us as a group, we come up with something, and we sign a non-disclosure with each other that we're not going to take our creativity, our information that we use to create whatever it is we create, and take it elsewhere individually, right? Right. Okay, so I'm I'm still not understanding. Somebody violates somebody violates it and does it anyway. Okay, and then what? They get in trouble, right? Damn. Yep, federal. Yeah. Am I missing something? Because yes. I'm thinking small, and y'all keep saying big stuff like federal, and I feel like I didn't catch it. We'll, we'll talk about it. we'll talk about it offline. Okay. Okay. Because we because we were talking about scammers, and scammers are taking a whole new whole new meaning because what they what they doing is stuff. It, it it goes it goes like this. Crooks start out normally. Crooks start out small. They start out by stealing things on a local level. And then as they continue to get away with stuff, they start breaking laws on a state level. And then before you know it, because they don't read, because they don't understand the law, they start violating federal law. And then they start yeah. getting hemmed up. Well, some scammers have taken it from local to federal by violating the NDA with a nonprofit. Oh, a symbol. To sum it up like this, a lot of people know that when the Taunton Assembly, uh, Taunton Assembly came around, we're sharing information about HUD Section 3 in USDA. Yes, mm -hmm. this is public info, but now what's not public about it is the projects that's going on with particular people in communities. So now to take that community's information, repackage it, sell it or reuse it and you sign the NDA, yeah, you just broke the deal. Mm, got you. Okay. I'm halfway tracking, but I'm going to leave it alone and talk to y'all later. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's like, again, people, people try to be slick because they claim that they know law, but see, law is not, law is not what gets you in trouble. And people don't understand that. These things that, what, what, what is act short for? Action, right? Yeah. 1866 act is what the action is. Law only comes in play when you violate an act or an action. So if there is no law violated, if there is no action violated, there is no need for the law, correct or incorrect. Mm, yeah. So it doesn't need, so it does you no good to know the law if you don't know what act is being violated. Case in point. You can dress up as a, as, as a police officer all day long and you're enforcing the law. 
But if everybody on the street is obeying the law by not violating any acts, why are you there? You and you just as you you are just as effective as a yield sign that can't nobody see. Because in order for the law to be activated, there has to be an act violated. Got you. That's why when people talk about the law, it's funny because there is no need for law unless you're talking about an act. What law is being, what act is being violated to activate the law? The law is a response to an act of violation. The law doesn't come first. Laws are created after an act is violated. And this is what people get messed up about. I know the law. I know the law. I know the law. I know the law. Yeah, but you're not paying attention to the acts because the acts is what the acts are the things that you can do. Because even because even with certain laws, you can commit an act, and only a certain part of that act is illegal. And if you don't do anything up until that point, then everything you do is legal. So there's no need for that law because that law is only created if all aspects of that act are not followed properly. See, people think they're smart, but they don't think. And that's how people end up going to jail because they know the law. Mm. But people don't go to jail for people don't go to jail for violating the law. They go to jail for violating an act, and they use the law to incarcerate them or punish them. Oh, anything you can. Oh, again, there are still levels of. Lectio deficilio, there's still levels of indoctrination placed on us when we say things and when we hear things. I know the law, I know the law, I know the law, I know the law. Yeah, I know you, you, you know the law, but if nobody's violating the law, what you gonna do? Wait, this isn't directed at me. No, I'm it's not, not, no, 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 this, no, no, this is not directed at you, but we're, we're, we're okay. still talking about scammers. And okay. you hear a lot of scammers talk about they know the law. Oh, I mean, okay. most, I, there ain't too many criminals I don't know that don't know the law. The problem, not knowing the law is not what got them hemmed up. Violating the act is what got them hemmed up. The only reason they know the law is because they got arrested. Because they got charged. And because they got incarcerated. That's why you know the law. But if you know the act, now you can utilize that act to take action. And you don't have to worry about the law. Oh, cause and effect. Exactly. See, the next thing, I think people don't realize what we built is an actual nonprofit company. Not by name, no. Registered, legally, licensed, an actual company. Hmm, yeah. You <laughs> <I'm> stupid. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Ooh, you gotta read it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow so yeah at the same so at the same time whenever someone says they know the law yeah they, they, you need to run go the other way because <laughs> the is a definite is a definite article there are multiple laws there are many laws there are many jurisdictions of laws there are different laws in different counties. So you can know the law in the state that you live in, but you come to my state, what you know in New York don't mean jack. What you know in Georgia don't mean jack. You can bring the Constitution in Virginia and then you get pimp slapped with it, I promise you. That part, Oak Cliff, that part. <laughs> Let me stop. So that's the whole thing. It's not, it's not the law that people should be paying attention to. It's the policies and the acts that people need to be paying attention to. Byron Wait. Island is not suing. Think about this. Byron Island is not suing Comcast for violating a law. He's suing them for violating an act. 
the law is what allows him to sue them for violating the act. That's no, why I saw. Wait, 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 wait. Say it again. Say it again. Byron Allen is not suing Comcast because they violated a law. Byron Allen is suing Comcast because they violated an act. Which is an action. Right. Yes, and the law um, allows him to sue. The law is what allows him to that sue. Is, I get it. He brought a lawsuit because they violated an act. He didn't bring a lawsuit because they violated the law. That hasn't that hasn't been determined yet. <laughs> but their act, mm -hmm. okay, and so the judgment will come based off of their actions. Right. The, their actions are coming uh, into yep. question. Their actions come into question. So now they have to look at the preponderance of evidence to determine if there has been a violation of act, which will mean a law will be enacted to punish them based off of what their actions were. And based off of the stipulations, or, okay, based off of the stipulations and the the policies put in place for the act, which is an action, mm -hmm. if they, if it's, if it's founded that they violated that, which is also breaking a law, right? Mm -hmm. so, okay, breaking a law, then they'll lose. But it's yeah. their actions, actions speak louder than words. It's their actions that will ultimately be judged, right? Right, and in order for you to break a law, there has to be a case law already created there is no mm. case law for this case laws come after a verdict is rendered so this will be the foundation right wow so when you start setting a precedence that's when you break and violate break laws so you know during the times of the, of the 1920s when there was all these oil companies violating these trust acts they created an antitrust law well, you couldn't create an antitrust law until you had to prove what act was being violated. Mm. Like TMA says, the violation comes first, then the law. Can't have law if nobody didn't violate anything. That okay, yeah. That so when you said okay, let me not say you said, but you did say it. Um, in order for a law to be created, you have to you have to break. What did you say? The you have to break the law. You have to you have to be in a violation of an action in order for a law to be created. Think about this. What came right. first? What came first? Horse stealing or punishment for horse stealing? Horse stealing? Yeah. Horse stealing came first because in order in order for there to be a law, in order for you to break the law of horse stealing, there had to be a law created. And it had to be a punishment for it. You can't create a law for something that don't exist. Law comes after. Yep. And then you break the law because there's a case study. That's why they have case law. That's why you look up certain cases and find out if that person was in violation of that law, which is nothing more than the action that that person committed. Did, what actions did they violate to substantiate them being a case in order for them to take it to court to either there be, to be support for the case law or the fact that they didn't break or they didn't violate that case law or if it was something similar to, similar to create another case law. That's the reason why on November 13th, he had to go to court to determine if there was enough evidence to go to court. That was a right. case study. That's all it was. It was a case study to determine if there was enough preponderance of evidence for him to go to court. People are stupid. So even more, this is it's, this is really setting a standard. Like exactly. This, is, this just got bigger than what I thought it was. Exactly. Like this is setting a standard. So because you got wins, people. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm listening. I'm listening. The world no, just got bigger than me. You have people who never attended a law class, who never studied case laws, prior cases, trying to tell you law, trying to tell you they know law, which is impossible because it's forever changing. It's only precedent on the case that happened before. If there's no prior case, <laughs> you gotta create something now. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna say, Stormy Weather Daniels, Pookie from New Jack City, thinks he's Nino Brown. Don't get high, high off your own supply. 
the map masters use people's money to get a bump live on air <laughs> lawyers know the law better than the judge rex in effect dude scratching live on air more than gator after he stole that television <laughs> <laughs> Oak Cliff Tiff was uncle of Keist. I'm not sure. Oh snap. He go he gonna throw me up on the bus. He's like, Gabby, read my read my comments since TMH won't. <laughs> I got you. I like to eat. But the majority of us this is the thing. The majority of the relatives know what's going on. The majority of the relatives know the parties. That's at play here. We have been watching this for the last eight months. This isn't new. Not what either. we must do is, when these things show up, we must stop just brushing it off and saying it's okay. Because these actions are the actions that put us all in this same basket. We must act better of ourselves and those who are supposed to represent us. Forget asking, demand better. Aren't you worth it? Aren't the seven generations moving forward worth it? Yeah. Again, if the people that represent you are bad characters and shaky, you can't question why the world treats you the way it treats you. Because look who you allow to represent you. Hmm. We letting somebody tell us they gonna represent us and we not, we just letting it happen. Yeah. Like, oh, you represent us? Oh, okay. Instead of questioning wow. why they represent you and, and then questioning what they're gonna do to um, make sure you get fair representation and compensation. Right. I don't, I'm not concerned whether somebody knows a law, I'm concerned what acts you know. Cause I wanna know, I wanna make sure you're not violating acts. Right. Because that's the only way I can vouch for you. I don't care whether you know the law. Now, law is irrelevant. Law is irrelevant because I don't. See, here's the thing. The law is irrelevant to me because I don't plan on breaking any acts that's going to require the law to come after me. So why do I need to know the law? Bingo. Hmm. Perspective. Because if I do everything that I'm supposed to do, am I concerned about the law? No. Hmm. When I'm minding my business, when we're minding our business. Matter of fact, last I remember when you mind your business, the laws protect you. Mm. But when you're minding your business, minding someone else's business, the law protects someone else now. See, so here, here, here's the difference between a law, <laughs> here's the difference between knowing the law and violating an act. A non-disclosure agreement that is signed is a contract that's protected under certain acts. When you violate that act, now you allow somebody to create a law suit. Hmm. Because the signing of a contract is an agreement that is an act and that is a pact stating Based off of the contents of said agreement, you will not disclose it amongst anybody other than the individuals that have signed it. So if, so if you're sharing that information with somebody that has not signed it, you are in violation of said act. And there is plenty of case law to support that. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that sit and marinate for a minute. There is plenty of case law to support violation of a non-disclosure agreement. Don't believe me? Look it up. You'll get at least ten pages of case law. So now the question will stand to reason: Was that action? Was that violation of that non-disclosure enough? to move forward with a trial or a lawsuit. 
Oh, so you can only sue somebody or have a lawsuit against somebody if you entered into some type of agreement with them that they, either you or they violated. Yes, so, it has to be so. Oh. There has to be an act. There has to be a violation of an act in order for there to be a lawsuit. That's okay. That's why oh, well, we people. Were- that's sorry. why defamation of character and slander or libel is the way that it is. People can cite defamation all day long, but it's only defamation or slander if it's not true, because the intent is to harm somebody. So if right. you say some of, so if you say something about my company, like, well, TMH Global changed the name of his company, so it's not TMH Global. It's actually TMH Global International doing business as TMH Global. And that hurts my, then that hurts my, you know, my, hurts my brand or that hurts my marketing. The fact that it's true is not li- slander or liable because it's true. So mm-hmm. I can't sue you because you didn't violate any act. You told the truth. Now, if you make a statement like TMS Global has stole millions of dollars and, 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 and was it was part of a racketeering scheme and it cost me money. That is libel or slander and, and a violation of, of defamation of character. If it's true, it's not a violation because there has already been case law that set a precedence of what slander and defamation is. But before there was case law, there had to be an act that was violated in order for that to even come up. That's why people, when people say they know the law, it's stupid. You know something after the fact. Byron Allen has created a precedent that's going to create a case law that's going to be the reason why we are able to do what we do or not do what we do. So well, you know, I'm right? Sorry, I'm sorry. I yeah, just so, realized they're going to try to fight tooth and nail. Right, that's the reason why the Harriet Tubman movement was created so they can get up enough money to fight. They're doing everything they can to add it because mm-hmm. they understand the importance. But people that know the law don't understand the importance of it because they're looking at the after after effect. They're not looking at the action. See, you mm-hmm. know the law means you late to the party. Mm-hmm. That means you're always going to be behind. Law comes later. Yep. And think about this. That act was created in 1866. 1866. We are up on the cusp of 2020. This case is that monumental because there has not been any other case or any other violation that has the potential to create a case law for violating an act that was created in 1866. Man, and if we smarten up, not to say that anybody's dumb, because I don't think that if we just get a little bit more wiser, this really kicks in the door for a lot of other things, not just, you know, the, the towers or whatnot, just businesses in general. Businesses why you think not we all build businesses. a bottomless assembly? Yeah, not they'll have you to are operate happy. differently. That's why we built no, 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 this. You're fine. We built this because of this. We built this knowing meaning that there's a law that's going to be formed after this we're putting ourselves in position so when that law drops and he win that case we already set up to do business moving forward yeah there are businesses well, i'm sorry go ahead no you good go ahead won't well, businesses all okay they lose this case all businesses are going to have to revamp like they're going to have to operate differently Right. It's not even that. It's access that changes. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, that means if there's a national football league, a group of us have the right to start another football league that cannot be interfered with. Mm-hmm. We can st- everything that's built, every infrastructure that's built, you can build your own. Look back at the 1866 Civil Rights Act mm-hmm. and see what it states. We are supposed to have access to everything everybody else have access to. Right. That means you can have you can have melanated people owning and operating power companies, water companies, cable companies. Hmm. Not just working there, owning them. Right. And this goes back to back to Bones' frustration. This act has been in effect since 1866. How long has the NAACP been in effect and why have they not filed any suits against 
these companies that have been violating this act for the longest. And the reason why is because some of them, if not most of them, sit on the board of directors of the major very companies that violate these acts. You know, you're absolutely yep. right. Really thinking about it, how many times you see um, NAACP, um, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton and them on the forefront with their faces out there with the but cases you don't see them the situations. Now. Yeah, they're dealing with, but this could have been brought up. This, hmm, this, this 1866 act could have been um, referred to so many times over. Let's put this in perspective. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Uh-huh. This could have been brought up in the 1900s. This could have been brought up in 1910. This could have been brought up in 1920. This could have been brought up in 1930. This could have been brought up in 1940. This could have been brought up in 1950. This could have been brought up in 1960 when you had Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X going on their going on their on, going on their journeys. This could have been brought up in 1970, 1980. This could have been brought up when. When um, Jesse Jackson in 1988 was looking at changing the names to to, to our title to African American, he 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 would rather change the name of our, our status to African American than talk about the violation of an 1866 act that has more effect on us than our daggone name. Right. Wow. Oh wait. I apologize, sweetheart. Celestial love. You're right. When Byron Allen wins. So at the end of the day, it's all good. So at the end of the day, what does what does knowing law get you if no one if everybody's missing the acts, the violation of the acts? Knowing the law is after the fact. That's like coming up to somebody and be like, "Yo, I know all the scores. I know all the scores of every game that was ever won." And so you know the scores of every game that was ever played. And what's your point? Yeah, you only you 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 know, very it's really nothing. Okay, it, do, it doesn't mean anything. It's a, it's, yeah. it's the after effect. You know the law, so you know the law, and well, you know how I feel about so so your drugs. Yeah, but if you don't know the and like you said, so what if you know the law? If you don't know the act that was violated, the law does you no good. Right. You call nine one one right now. What's the first thing gonna ask you? What's your emergency? What's the problem? What do you need? What act happened? What action took place? They want to know details. They don't want to know what law was violated. They want to know what happened. Because you have to, yeah, you have to do the act. Then the act puts you under jurisdiction of said law. What? Y'all talking some logic. But that's how it that's how it works. But again, right. you get people that read something, take half coded information, and come back and tell you this how it works. And when you get jammed up, they no place to be found. So they know two things: they know the law and they know what to hide. <laughs> yeah, be like the Hulk. Whenever the cops would um, were coming, the Hulk would disappear. Yeah, they hide and go seek champions. Hmm. That's crazy. Lawyers constantly going to school. You ain't been in name class, but you know the law. Mm. And people need to need to stop saying that the bar ties back to the British. No, it does not. Please look it up and study what the bar is that the lawyers do. It has nothing to do with Britain. Thank you. Two separate things spelled the same way. I understand what just happened. What they try to say, lawyers go back to the British. Uh, man, I forgot uh, what the bar is called over there. But these are two different things. I remember we did the build on that. Well, people would tell you lawyers are British agents or agents to the crown. No, they're not. Look, I advise relatives, look into it for yourself. That is not how it works. Isn't, doesn't a bar, isn't a bar an association? Yeah. Yep. What are most of your associations? Hmm? What are most of your associations? They're nonprofits, right? 
nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Nah. But you know the law. Okay. Oh, I missed one of James's. Long on to my website, www.attachedusassemble.com forward slash scam dot you. Okay, that's it. Pamela says, Jesse and Al only want to go around when you win. They don't want to put in the work. Mm. Just real quick. You know, here, because uh, proof ain't no problem, ever. Bar and law. The bar is the legal profession as an institution. The term is was a uh, metonym for the line or bar that separates the parts of a courtroom reserved for spectators and those reserved for participants in trials such as lawyers. That's what the bar is pertaining to lawyers and in the United States. What's, what's, what's James talking about this um, Richard Pryor violating NDAs? What was your question again, Gabby? I didn't hear you. I didn't. Um, okay, I apologize. Um, Do the vision. Put a message up and it says you got Richard Pryor violating NDAs. <laughs> you got to read it between the lines. I'll break it down after the show. Okay. But you just laughed. And, and now I feel like I missed the joke, the punchline. I'll break it down after the show. Okay, okay. Actually, the National Bar Association was founded in 1925 and is the nation's oldest and largest national network of predominantly African-American attorneys and judges. It, it represents mm -hmm. the interest of approximately 65,000 lawyers, judges, law professors, and law students. The NBA is organized around 23 substantive, substantive law sections, nine divisions, 12 regions, and 80, 80 affiliate chapters throughout the United States around the world. It is a nonprofit organization. But who's the majority of lawyers and judges? Who they tie back to? Who? What do you mean? The they use the misnomer African American? Yeah, African American. So now let's break this down. Now, why would you think they would feed you this false name of what the bar is and what it represents when the majority of your people are the ones that's in it? You see what they were doing? They were making you pull away from your sales making you hate things without even researching and questioning what it is. You're hating something that's ran by the majority of your own people. Hmm. Hmm. Now I'll put this link in the, in the chat so y'all can see it. As you know, proof ain't a problem. We say something, we want to be able to cite sources. So I'm giving you the website that I actually read it from. Pamela Hall said, that's not fair, Bones. All of us want to know. What does IKR mean? I know, right? Oh. Oh, I know, right? Okay. <laughs> Ain't Richard Pryde a comedian uh, around here smoking and set himself on fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> again, knowing the law is irrelevant. Know the acts. Know the policies. Because that's, that's where you move in. Knowing the law is like telling somebody you know where all the cars are parked. Don't nobody care. <laughs> so, you know, if y'all got issues with what I'm saying, y'all know where to find me. So. 
So I did all that talking, man, and we didn't even get to the but we didn't even get to the ninth cavalry, right? <clears throat> Hello? Anybody hear me? Y'all hear me? Anybody oh, breaking hear? up. Who, me? I'm breaking oh, up. No, that sounds clearer now. Oh. I was saying, we haven't even started reading uh, Buffalo Soldier, so. The Ninth Cavalry. So let's read. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and post a link in the chat. The you know, for the necessary airing out of the air, a necessary cleaning of the air. Oh, most definitely. I'm not able to share my screen today because I'm short one screen. So, just gonna have to listen. All right, so I'll go ahead and read for a little bit and then um, either no sell out. Well, Gabby can read afterwards. <laughs> okay, we're 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 starting from the beginning, though, right? Yeah, we're starting from the beginning. Due division says you got Canadians trying to tell you about U.S. laws <laughs> and claiming to be what do you say, a Morris American? He told me Which to read it out loud. Living in Canada. Well, go ahead and read out loud, Gabby. Go ahead. Oh, Canadians. I get it. It's a slight. Canadian. I'm American. Duh. I get it. How can you be American when you're Canadian? What? Oh, yes. You're right. Oh, crap. How can a Canadian tell me about U.S. law? They can't. They can't. <laughs> no, I get that. I just can I call in during shout outs? Do the vision. You ain't no, you ain't never gotta ask can you call in. Come on, man. Stop playing. You can call in at any time. You know you got the key. I'm listening when you talk. Can I call in when y'all doing shout outs? Stop playing. Speaking of which, we I didn't do I didn't do the roll call, so uh I, I, I am remiss, so please forgive me. So let me go ahead and get that done right now. Grand Rising, the Big Hawk, Doodle Vision, Golden Moon, Marlon P, Grand Rising 2, uh, Mayan Sun 0911, aka Liz Robinson, Grand Rising to Michael Harris Brown Cheek, Grand Rising to Mr. TJ, Grand Rising to Pamela Hall, Grand Rising to Phoenix Rose, Grand Rising to Tiny zero four zero fofo. A grand rising to nature's void. Grand rising to celestial love. Grand rising to oak cliff. Who else we got? Did I forget anybody? Did yep. I forget? Yep. Oh, you forgot copper colored ancestor. You forgot Carrie. Grand rising. Hey. Grand rising. Who else we got? Pete Pamela Hall. Favorite foreman named Pamela Hall. <laughs> yeah, because Grand Rise in Ohio player from the Himalayas. Player, player. What about Pete Parker? Grand Rise and Pete Parker. Parker. Hey. Nature's Void? You did Nature's Void, right? Yep, Grand Rise and Golden Moon, aka KD. Wasn't KD the um, the producer for Naughty by Nature? Yep. That's what I thought. One of the more underrated producers. Dude, the vision says I have, he said I just have extra shout outs today. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to reading. Or reading. You're at the beginning, right? Yep, I'm at the beginning where it reads the Ninth Cavalry Regiment. <laughs> Come on, Mark. 
You on Mark? I'm Mark. Okay. And it's interesting because the 9th Cavalry Regiment, their insignia is of a Indian with a, This is so wrong. They have mm. an Indian with with Plains Indian headdress riding a horse bareback. Because y'all know different Indians wore different headgear. Yep. Our ancestors didn't wear war bonnets with feathers sticking out like that. So, but anyway. Um, are you looking at a picture on the same page? Yeah, it's on the same page. It's on the side where it says insignia. Insignia. Yeah. Right below commanders, and then right below, and then there's um the ninth cavalry regiment it's over to the right. If because I'm on the um the cavalry, I'm on a wiki page, wiki the Wikipedia page. Yeah. The ninth yellow cavalry. with gold and blue, yellow yeah. with gold and blue. You talking about the coat of arms? No, not the coat of arms. The coat of arms is what you're looking at. Now, if you look up under that, where you'll see active country branch oh. type yeah. insignia, exactly. You see it now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Plains Indian riding a horse. No, that's that that's that's not correct. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Isn't that Notre Dame's colors? Uh, yeah, if you put the gold, gold and blue, yeah. Gotta be a little bit more golden though. Okay. Okay, I'm on mute. You reading, right? Yeah, I'm reading. Um, I'm on mute. It says historically, it was one of the few segregated. <sighs> they say African American regiments. It wasn't an African American regiment because there are no Africans attached to this regiment. It was one of the few American Indian regiments. The unit served in combat during the Indian and Spanish American Wars, during westward expansion. The unit provided security to the early Western settlers and the early American borders against Indian bands, Mexican encroachment, and criminal elements. Here's a question I have to ask people. If these were African Americans, how would they know where the borders, where one border ended and where one border began? And how can they defeat or control Indians when the Indians were here before they got here? And how could they communicate with the Indians if they were Africans? Anybody? 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 Uh, what? I, you know I know it. Can I use a word that was in the question as an answer? No, because no, that doesn't answer. I need I need speci- I need specific answers. Oh, okay, okay. Um, no, no general answer will suffice at this particular point in time in this juncture. I, I got one that's not general. Okay, I know what you're gonna say, but I'm gonna let you say it anyway. Go ahead, say what you say. Do what you do. What? It's connected to the forts. So, oh, so you know. It's African. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. So a quick answer to the chat real quick. Uh, I had an email come in. Anyone who wants to download the app, it does not ask you for permission. You do not have to give over your address or any information, your contact list, your text list, your email list. It asks you for no permission Second. to your devices or information, period. Second born, right? That's the one that asked. Nope. Uh, and here's a funny thing. It so this is the second paragraph. As of 2019, which means this year, the first battalion and fourth squadron serve, serve, serve with the second brigade combat team, first cavalry division. Oh. Huh? Hold up! Didn't they say it was this band died off and gone yesterday? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! How do you dead disbanded people fighting in 2019? 
As of 2019, the 1st Battalion and 4th Squadron serve as a present tense with the 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Cavalry Division as a combined arms battalion and armored reconnaissance squadron, respectively, while the 6th Squadron is armored reconnaissance squadron of the 3rd Brigade Combat Team of the division. All three unions, all three unions, all three units are stationed at Fort Hood. Stationed, currently, active, serve. Somebody lying. Because I, could, I know somebody stationed at Fort Hood and I could ask them if that's actually true. So, anyway. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. We got some signal issues. Who, me? Yeah, it's a little bit of My bad. That seems to be gone. Can you hear me now? Yep, worse. You said it's worse? I heard something. Really? Right, Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says the regiment was constituted on 28 July 1866. There's a lot of 1866 going on right here. The regular army as the 9th Cavalry on 3 August 1866, Major General Philip H. Sheridan, commanding the military division of the Gulf, was authorized to raise, among others, one regiment of colored cavalry to be designated the 9th Regiment of the U.S. Cavalry. Basically, this commander was told to go get the Seminoles and make them and, and, and put bring them up under the United States Army. That's basically what it was told. The regiment was organized on the 21st September 1866 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and mustered between September 1866 and 31 March of 1867. Its first commanding officer was Colonel Edward Hatch. The men enlisted for five years and received $13 per month, plus room, board, and clothing. Later, huh? You're going in and out. Okay, well, can somebody else read then? Because it's, it's probably. Because I'm on the. Okay. Yeah. Where it says later they were dubbed Buffalo Soldiers under formation. Second paragraph, third sentence. The regiment was organized. Uh, yeah, I've already read that. So, the, the third sentence where it says later they were dubbed Buffalo Soldiers. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, later they were dubbed Buffalo Soldiers. The regiment's motto was and remains, we can, we will. The mustering organized, the mustering organized by Major Francis Moore, 65th U.S. Colored Infantry formed the nu nucleus of the enlisted strength and was obtained by, nope, was obtained from New Orleans and its vicinity. In the autumn of 1866, recruiting began in Kentucky and all the men of the ninth of the ninth were obtained from that state of and Louisiana. The horses were obtained at St. Louis, Missouri. About the middle of September, all recruits were assembled in New Orleans, where empty cotton presses were used as barracks. An epidemic of cholera caused 29 soldiers' death between October and December, with, with 46 other soldiers deserting by the end of March, 1867. The camp was moved to Car Carrollton, a suburb of New Orleans. Officers, officer positions did not begin to be fully staffed until February 1867. By the end of 
March 1867, the ninth, the ninth Cavalry was at nearly full strength with a total of 885 enlisted men, or an average of over 70 to a troop. Wait, by the end, well, hold on. By the end of March 1867, the Ninth Cavalry was at nearly full strength with a total of 885 enlisted men, or an average of over 70 to, to a troop and was ordered to San Antonio, Texas, where it arrived where it arrived early in April for three months of training. However, troops troops L and M went directly to their duty stations at Brownsville, Texas. So, so I'm gonna point everybody's attention. An epidemic of cholera caused 29 soldiers deaths between October and December with 46 other soldiers deserted by the end of March 1867. So you telling me that, that soldiers deserted because they was running from cholera? You gotta remember this time, 1876, what was happening? I mean, 1867. Think about it. There was still wars going on in Texas. Some of them had to make a decision whether or not they wanted to, they wanted to, they wanted to fight their own brothers and sisters. This is not an isolated incident. This stuff is still going on at the same time. So we have to look at the timeline. Why why would why would why would soldiers desert unless they felt that they were needed somewhere else? What were they running from? They were being paid, so why would they run? Maybe they didn't agree to what they were supposed to be doing. Because think about this. You got, you got soldiers that were supposed to be training for three months and you got some soldiers that were straight into duty. If you are a former slave and you don't know how to read or write, how are you gonna know how to fight? What kind of training did you have when the only thing that you've ever been doing was doing was what master told you your whole life? Mm. Active duty means just that. You've already been trained and prepared. You going in there to fight. They didn't go there to just sit around and play cards. They went there to work. So in order for them to go straight to duty, they must have already been trained in what they was doing. Now, I've never seen in any of US history where slaves rode horses and battle with Indians. Anybody ever see that training? Anybody ever see that movie? Who that man on that neck? So with that being the case, who were these slaves? They weren't slaves, they were Seminole Indians who already had access to horses, who already knew how to roll horse, ride horses, who were already battling with the Plains Indians. And you know we gotta remember as well, What's that? that term Indian, the term Indian and slaves at this time is interchangeable. Mm -hmm. We gotta remember, they had Indians capturing other Indians and enslaving them. Yep. Mm -hmm. So troops L and M went directly to the station at Brownsville, Texas. When there was where there was a war going on, they needed to get rid of the Comanche. So how so think about it. You a slave, right? Cause the Emancipation Proclamation didn't get signed to what, 1863? So you mean to tell me from 1863 to 1868? Well, 1867, you automatically know everything there is to know about a horse. You know automatically everything there is to know about Indians. You automatically know all their languages, but you weren't smart enough to keep your tail off the coast when you was getting when you was getting snatched up by Europeans. They go sit down somewhere. Why they never just rode the horse off of the uh, slave plantation into the sunset? If they were horse riders already. Mm hmm. Cause that same That's what I mean, it don't make sense. Exactly. It does not make sense. You hate me so much that you think I'm inferior, but I'm so inferior, you're gonna give me a horse and weapons. To go against some Indians that's been here their whole life to battle them. You want me to battle some people and they from here and I'm not. That's like somebody sending me to dead go Florida to fight somebody and they ain't never been there before. Don't know the terrain, don't know the layout, 
but they sending me to your backyard to fight you, and you've been there your whole life. Okay, good luck with that. One. Don't even know who you technically don't even really know who you're looking for. Crazy. So everybody's saying that they can hear me on their end. Anyway. Yeah, it just broke up for like a couple of seconds and it cleared back up. Yeah. So Gabby, if you if you're able to read, can you read the um the next paragraph? Um yes. In April 1867, violent altercations between officers and soldiers occurred in Lieutenant Edward Hale's, Hale's Troop E and Lieutenant Fred Smith's Troop K near San Antonio as a result of poor moral morale and poor leadership. Sergeant Harrison Bradford and Lieutenant Seth, Seth E. Griffin died. Okay, and ten soldiers deserted from troop from E troop. The soldiers at this point still had still had not been introduced to the Articles of War, and so two soldiers convicted to convicted to death were pardoned and restored to duty. Okay, I'm confused. So basically what they're trying to say is they, they had not been introduced to the Articles of War when it came to dealing with Indians that they were fighting. So apparently, based off of this, there was a disagreement be between the enlisted soldiers or the enlisted ones and the officers of e troop, And there was an altercation by, by the way they make it sound. And that altercation led to some troops dying. And because there was no Articles of War instituted, the soldiers that were convicted to death because of the people that they killed were pardoned and restored to duty. Because obviously, it sounds like that. It says that, yeah, Lieutenant Sergeant Harrison Bradford and Lieutenant Seth E. Griffin died, and 10 soldiers deserted from E Troop. So, those soldiers that deserted from E Troop must have been responsible for killing Sergeant Harrison and Sergeant Harrison Bradford and Lieutenant Seth E. Griffin. And because there were no articles of war established, so they say, the soldiers were the soldiers that were convicted to death were pardoned and restored to duty, meaning they were let go because, because <laughs> it's amazing how things tie. There was no act violated, so there was no law to punish them. Bingo. Articles of war had to be violated in order for them to, to to be in conflict with an action. So because there was no articles of war, war being an action, it's an action word, it's a verb. You cannot convict somebody of a crime when the crime didn't exist. How are you gonna be violation of something when it didn't, then it didn't exist? So you can't convict somebody of a crime that didn't happen. The crime had to have happened before in order for there to be a case law in order for you to be convicted against it, to be measured by it. That's what the scales, that's what the weight and scales stand for. What are you comparing that violation to? There has to be something on the books. Idiots. Sorry. Not sorry. Use your words. I did. <laughs> and not to mention again the military is a non-profit so who wants to read um, the Indian Wars I need to step away for like two or three minutes so Bones and Gabby y'all got it right quick yeah alright mm-hmm good job Libra I mean, you've you been over there, man. You've been quiet, you know, you know. I was chiming in. Okay, really. Okay. I also can't read right now, so I'm just saying. <laughs> really? 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 But you ain't know that. <laughs> really? Is it, is Carry on, doing? Gabby. Gabby and Bob. Yes, he's saying at least you could have offered. Let, gave, gave him a chance to say he couldn't do it. You need mm. to give him a chance. 
Who the one that? Who's the one that saw? I can, I can say the fact that he grown, he could open his own mouth. But anyway, I'm, I'm going on mute. I'll be right back. Give me, give me three minutes. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, Indian Wars. In July 1867, the Ninth Cavalry was ordered to, ordered to western and southwestern Texas to maintain law and order between the Rio, the Rio Grande and Concho, Concho Rivers along a 630 mile line with seven forts from Fort Clark to Fort Quintman near present day El Paso. In parentheses, the forts ended up including Fort Quintman, Fort Quintman, Fort Davis, Fort Stockton, Fort Lancaster, Fort Clark, Fort Duncan, Fort McCavick, and Fort Concho, out of parentheses. Regimental headquarters and troops A, B, E, and K under Colonel Hatch were stationed at Fort Stockton. Troops C, D, F, G, H, I under Lieutenant Wesley Merritt were a fort were at Fort Davis. Troops L and M under interesting. Troops L and M under 